For many people, true crime is the most addictive podcast genre. And my next guest is the, hope, uh, is the host of Up and Vanished, which has more than 350 million downloads to date and was, has just wrapped up its third season. This season focused on the disappearance of a young indigenous woman. And podcast creator Payne Lindsay didn't just want to share her story, he wants justice for her. Ashley Loring Heavy Runner was only 20 years old when she disappeared from the Blackfeet Indian Reservation in Montana in 2017. More than four years later, no one has been arrested or charged. Her sister Kimberly described it as a nightmare that never ends. Ashley's story is one of many involving indigenous women. On some reservations, they are murdered at a rate more than 10 times the national average. Now, a podcast titled Up and Vanished is focusing on Ashley's story. Host Payne Lindsay says he wants to solve Ashley's case and draw attention to other missing and murdered indigenous women in America. Payne Lindsay is the host and executive producer of Up and Vanished. Payne, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, you know, Ashley's story, it, it, it's, it's startling the numbers. We actually did a show on who gets to be the headline when they're missing. And we talked about the staggering figure, the staggering number of missing indigenous women out there. How did Ashley's story rise to the top for you to pursue? I mean, basically, just like you just said, uh, being a true crime listener and creator for years, it seems like we've been overly obsessed about missing white women. And there are tons of people out there who aren't getting the same kind of coverage. And missing indigenous women is probably the most underreported uh, kinds of missing person cases out there. And so to me, it only felt right to use this platform that we had created to spotlight a case that but maybe otherwise not get the same kind of attention. People have asked me this when um, we did the show, why does it keep happening? Why do you believe missing indigenous women keep being ignored um, by the media, even though the number is there and it's proof that they are being ignored? I mean, I think it's a complex issue as to why we are ignoring it. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, I would want to point my finger at you know, the news outlets themselves and only covering things that, I mean, maybe they're interested in or what they think that the general public wants to hear or talk about. But the bottom line is, I think that, you know, there's something, you know, wrong happening in Montana and on these reservations. And the only way to fix this or move forward is to cover it and to talk about it. Yeah. As uncomfortable as it is, it's like, you know, if we're going to be reporting on this stuff, we need to, it's our responsibility to, to do the right thing. Well, what you are doing in addition to reporting and telling Ashley's story, um, you are investigating this, which makes this very different from other true crime podcasts where they are telling the story or giving details on what happened in court. You are in the mix of it, which can be dangerous as well. What prompted you to take it to that next level? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll admit it, it can be pretty sketchy sometimes yeah. when you're you're knocking on the door of a suspected murderer. Um, to me, it, it just, it's the only way that I knew how to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't, I didn't feel good about just rehashing, you know, going through the Wikipedia article right. of some horrendous thing that happened uh, to even justify doing it or retelling it at all. I wanna bring new information to the table. I want to be able to find something. That's why I like your podcast. I'll be very transparent. I Thank the, you. the rehashing to your point of you know going through the Wikipedia or pulling up someone else's reporting on it and then reading from that. Um, it has its place. Don't get me wrong. But what you're doing is not using Ashley for downloads. You're trying to solve what happened to her, and you have a theory about what happened to Ashley. I do. I, I was hoping you wouldn't ask that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I didn't. No, you're fine. I, I mean, I think that it's, if you listen to season three of the podcast, you know, we kind of land on a certain group of people towards the end. And I think that whatever happened to Ashley, the answer lies there, yeah. you know, without even pointing fingers or naming names. Yeah. If you go through her timeline, we've unpacked it. You know, there are certain players that are clearly 
hiding something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just need more evidence to be able to actually arrest somebody. Well, um, the season of the podcast wrapped up, and I do know you expect to get more information and um, you are open to new episodes to continue this. But Payne, I appreciate you joining me and, and I am thankful that someone like you has decided to pursue this, not just for Ashley, but for her family, because that's the pain that lingers with them and we know that they want the answer and they deserve it. Thank you, Payne, for joining us and please check out Up and Vanish.